Tyson Fury is apparently suing UCAD, that is UK anti-doping, over the claims, the apparent claims, because UCAD haven't spoken publicly, but the apparent claims that UCAD charged Tyson Fury with a doping violation of taking Nandrolone. Now, I did a video about this particular story when it broke. It was the the uh, the Mirror newspaper in the UK that broke first broke this story of Tyson Fury and his cousin Huey Fury allegedly testing positive for uh, performance enhancing drugs. But strangely, we never heard anything from the sources that the Mirror newspaper were citing for this information. Uh, being UCAD and I believe the British Board of Boxing Control, but I'm not 100% sure about the British Board. I know that UCAD were their primary uh, source. So we initially heard from the Mirror, and then as I said in that particular video, people tried to pull me up about it, but it was true. Several other newspapers then started reporting the same thing. The Sun newspaper, I think the Telegraph also, a bunch of UK newspapers started printing this story about Tyson Fury allegedly failing a drug test. Now, in this particular article, which I'm reading on the Sun newspaper's website, they're talking about Tyson Fury saying that he's, or well, Tyson Fury has apparently, through his lawyers, launched a legal, uh, launched legal proceedings against UCAD. It says here that the world champion's lawyers lodged high, high court papers to refute charges that he used a performance enhancing substance. Fury, who denies the doping allegations, is demanding answers over why he has been charged and also wants damages. UCAD's rap dates back to urine samples taken in February 2015. They show traces of banned substance Nandrolone nine months before Fury's title win over Vladimir Klitschko. Tyson Fury, uh, sorry, let me skip to a different part of the article here. Uh, and Fury wants to know why it took until June 24th this year for charges to be brought. The Mancunian heavyweight says he was told by UCAD he would face no action over the test. Fury's legal team say that the second test showed no traces of the anabolic steroid and that a blood test at the time was also negative. So what else is here now? Uh, yeah, Team Fury claim they were told by UCAD that the contamination of a dietary supplement was the most likely explanation of the positive result. So again, I'm just reading here from the article on the Sun newspaper's website. Team Fury, according to them, claim that they were told by UCAD that the contamination of a dietary supplement was the most likely explanation for the positive test results. So Team Fury, by saying that, if they did indeed say that, are basically acknowledging that there was some kind of positive test result. But they're saying that UCAD, or they're allegedly saying that UCAD claim or told them that it was probably down to a contaminated dietary supplement which I'm assuming they're saying that both Tyson and his cousin Huey, Huey Fury must have taken. So from what I can gather, from what I can discern from the information that's been made public at the moment, there actually was a positive test. That's what it seems to be. It, the, the only dispute that I can gauge from the information that's been made public by the newspapers and whatnot is the dispute over why that test was positive and over the, uh, the, the, the words or the understanding that Team Fury and UCAD came to behind the scenes. There seems to be some dispute over that and I guess that's why Fury is launching legal action. To my knowledge, at least in terms of uh, what's been made public, Tyson Fury is not seeking legal action against any newspapers. I've heard a rumor that he's seeking legal action against the Mirror, but not the other newspapers that printed the story. I mean, I, I don't know about that. That's just a rumor. In terms of officially, Fury is only going after UCAD. Now, if the newspapers had broken any laws or any type of gagging order or anything like that then I would assume Tyson Fury would have to go after them first because believe you me newspapers have a hell of a lot more money than UCAD <laughs> that goes without saying if you want to try and take somebody to court 
and you think there's a violation and you've got a choice between taking UCAD to court or taking the mirror or any other tabloid newspaper, you're going to take the newspaper because they got more money. You're dealing with UCAD, I mean, can they even pay out the kind of money that you want in damages? Do they even have that? You might destroy the entire organization by suing them if you win. And they might not even be able to give you the money. Or it, the money may not be forthcoming very quickly. Whereas soon a newspaper, they got money on tap. <laughs> You'll get money out of them. You know, ask Frank Warren, he sued newspapers on numerous occasions and won. So, yeah. Um, and also, I'm not sure what the situation is with regards to the confidentiality, if there was any type of gagging order. Uh, placed on newspapers as well as UCAD. I mean, there seems to be, from the outside looking in, a gagging order with UCAD and the British board because they haven't spoken. And the only explanation I can think of as to why they wouldn't have spoken is because they're not allowed to speak from a legal standpoint. Whereas the Mirror did speak and all the other newspapers started speaking on it after that. And I guess once something is public domain, this is quite common when it comes to... Uh, legal situations, once information becomes public domain, then people are allowed to talk about it and what have you, uh, generally anyway. Whereas the person or the entity which made it public domain in the first place, they might be culpable. They might be responsible. They might be eligible to, or eligible for legal action or legal proceedings to be brought against them for making the uh, the information public domain when they didn't have the right to. But once it is public domain and it's already out there, then I'm guessing that's why the other newspapers haven't been targeted because they're just reporting on what the Mirror newspaper reported initially. So uh, if that's not the case, then please drop it in the comment section below and let me know. Um, yeah, this is the situation at the moment. There's a legal... Uh, you know, there are legal proceedings going on between Tyson Fury and UCAD. And we'll see what comes from it. It's very interesting. I want to know exactly how this test, if it was positive, was found to be positive. This dietary supplement situation, it all see, it's all very, very mysterious at the moment. And I guess, or I hope, when the legal issue is resolved in court, that the information and the details surrounding what's going on will be made public. Because right now we're only getting bits and pieces from Tyson Fury's camp, basically. We're not really getting much from UCAD other than through uh, the press. We've got nothing from UCAD directly yet. And nothing from the British Board of Boxing Control directly either. So once the court case is resolved, hopefully we will get that. Anyway, people, drop your comments in the comment section below. If you have any more info on this, enlighten us all, all right? It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.